Uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit about Inuits. And I'm going to share a screen with you real quick. Two, 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 point, share. So uh, InuitSculptures.com, um, it, it is a link to kind of show off and showcase Inuit work. And uh, they're not working with soap. They're going to work with, with more traditional materials. But again, this is art for art sale. This is not art for, um, this is not historical art. It's done in a historical manner and with a historical um, idea behind it. But this is all commercial for sale art. And you can come down below and you can see um, everything's for sale. And this is a way that their group um, makes money for their people. So uh, the artist uh, can, the artist gets a percentage of it, the Inuit group gets a percentage of it, and then the gallery keeps a percentage of it. One thing that you should look at is a lot of these are in the round sculptures. So these are not relief carvings. These are meant to be looked at from all sides. So I want to show you boop -doop, this one. Oh, right there's the button. So uh, some of the things that, that you should be working on right now as you're going through is uh, you should have already like kind of started your layout from your sketches to your soap. So you should have started that transfer process. After starting the transfer process, next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, is you wanna to start to look at um, how am I going to start to remove my soap parts. So think of it as a, a layer, and then you also have to think of it from each dimension. So where you're removing things from and where you're uh, kind of pulling things down. If something breaks, we can always try to pin it or glue it back in place. Uh, a couple of you have talked about, and when we were in the class, we we're going to look at if like people had different color soaps, you can maybe borrow soap from someone and you can carve that to make like different colored eyes or to make different looks for it. Uh, when we're looking at um, Inuits, so some of the traditional things that, that Inuits used to use um, is stone and uh, they would use, uh, and it's a whole list here of different kinds of stones, but they're gonna use stones that they can find easily. And then as culture evolves, they can get into more complex stones, um, such as marble um, or uh, some things that they would have to mine for. Bone, bone would be a big uh, use. And when it says ivory, um, we're talking ivory from like walruses, their tusks, um, that's where they're getting their ivory from. Uh, this is a cross section, this is a cut piece of ivory, and ivory is uh, a sculpture, is a controlled substance throughout the world now. So they have to be careful how and what they use it for. So that's why it's um, under the conservation. They have things where they bind things together. Um, now, in soap, it's not going to be easy to do because the soap is too soft, but this is, they've taken pieces and they've used um, any type of traditional weaving or binding to kind of hold those together. This would be a stone carving. It's out of soapstone. Uh, soapstone is a soft stone. We have man-made uh, soapstone uh, that we can use. Um, it is, it's a resource that is easily now made or gathered. And again, this is in the round. This piece would be in the round, so you can see it from all sides. Even this figure, though the back of it may not be as decorated as the front view, would still be a, a in the round sculpture. The Inuits were not much of a relief carving. They, they had their things so they could be set and used, um, laid out for, for a person to kind of manipulate and work around. If you're working relief carving, um, you're doing things that are more traditional, as in traditional Greek or traditional um, uh, things that are attached to a building are usually a relief carving. So uh, 
soap. <laughs> we are working along today, and all we're doing is, is we're just checking in um, to make sure that everybody has started in on the actual bar of soap by now. And, and again, you don't need complex tools to do it. You can use a paper clip and unfold the paper clip and use that to do your outlining and to do your detail work. Um, you can use a popsicle stick. You can use a, and you can shape the popsicle stick to make it into different tools. Um, you can use a butter knife to, for your mass amounts. I'm gonna show you a couple of things of relief carving quick. Oop. So in a relief carving, this is meant to be viewed from one side. The back would be flush to hang against the wall or to sit against the surface. So these are wood relief carvings. Um, relief carving can also be done in a multitude of materials. You can, be, you can have relief carvings in stone. You can have relief carvings um, uh, made out of woods, um, ivories. Uh, there are some of the Inuit carvings that are done and, and the back of the tusk would be safe and then the front of the tusk would be where all the carving is. But we're looking at, it looks great from one view. It doesn't look great from top or bottom, definitely not from back, back would still be flat. But this front view the, is the view you should be looking at it. Um, and as you're kind of going through, like this one here, you can see where the person's slowly work their gouge um, and the flower sits here. This would be the top areas and you can see how it's still a flat board piece and then they start to carve down into it and they're slowly removing the excess from around the edges. That transforms into something along these lines when you're done. You have some nice undercuts. Undercuts are areas where you deepen a, a line or you thicken um, a piece and then cut underneath it so that it has a deep shadow and that's these deep shadows that create and it gives you a, an illusion of more depth than what's really on the surface of the piece. Regardless of which way you're doing, um, I would be working right now on my soap. I have my layout and I'm starting to remove out my bulk pieces. Take out the big chunks that you know you don't need. Save them in case something breaks or in case you want to reuse them. But overall, you're, uh, you are working, um, you're working to get that kind of core set. And then once you've removed all your bulk, then you can start to go in and start to refine things. Uh, yes, we are talking about the soap project, Kaya. So at, um, at this point, I would think that some of you have already started. I, I think one of you uh, sent me a message that said uh, you were um, almost done carving your soap and that's great. It's a little ambitious, you're, you're okay. Uh, we're looking at today, I just wanted to kind of contact with you and say, here's where we should be. Um, so where we should be is we should be starting soap. If you have not yet touched a bar of soap, today's the day to start it. And um, nice kitty. So uh, you should be um, into that first stage. If you're already into that, you've already started your layout, and you've already started carving, then um, make sure you're, you're taking your time and make sure you are, you're working through the process. I would leave extra space around your main sculpture and slowly work towards that. Go from big bulky, which is the bar of soap, um, and then refine it down into the shape you want. For those of you doing in the round, remember the bar of soap is gonna be narrow, so your design should take advantage of that narrow space. Don't just chunk away at the soap. Don't take off tons of soap. So the lesson, uh, doo -doo -doo, which is here, <laughs> Uh, so we're going to go over um, your sketches of what's 2D and your final project is what will be 3D. All of this I'm going to put on the Google Classroom uh, this afternoon. So if, if there's time by the time we're done with this lecture, I will put it up then. If not, um, I will put all of this up here. So really, 
what we're looking at and what we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to have a finished, nice looking product. Uh, showing off your abilities to take your two dimensional idea and translate it into the finished 3D piece. So is there any questions? Is anyone having any problems? Has anyone started yet? You wanna show me a little bit. Nobody, nobody? Does that, has anyone started yet? Anyone willing to share their starts? Did all of you know that the governor has said um, at midnight tonight we are supposed to uh, shelter in place? You guys are just like you are at the morning at school. Quiet. How many people fell asleep? I hope nobody. All right, so if nobody has any general questions, um, that's really what I wanted to do today was just kind of touch base with you and make sure that you, oh, there's Kaya's. Um, there it goes, kind of fades in and out with your uh, magic uh, bridge back there. So that's a good relief carving um, that Kaya has that she's showing us. So starting from the top down, um, can you show us a side view of it, Kaya? So you can see, well, kind of see, um, there you go. The bulk of it, she still has the shape of the soap. She still has been working um, those edges down and she's carved it on each side a little bit. And now her big thing is gonna be getting that image down into the piece. I'm slowly refining it so that her details show up and then uh, making sure that she has nice undercuts so her shadows give her, um, give her a nice depth of field. Um, if we aren't allowed to home to buy our soap for bathing, uh, do you give us permission to use, it, to use our sculptures? Well, hopefully it doesn't come to that, but make sure you take pictures before you bathe with your, um, oh, you couldn't see hers? Oh, that's sad. It was like right there. It'll be in the video. Uh, so Carson wants to know, can, can you use your sculpture to bathe with? Uh, make sure you take pictures first before you destroy it in the bathtub. Uh, sorry, Cole. All right, then. Um, I will save the video, and then you guys can see uh, Kaya's piece there. Um, it's a, it's a top-down carving, and then she rotates a little bit so you can see the sides. Otherwise, it's all I have today. If you want to stick around and you want to ask some questions, I will uh, stop the recording, and then people who need to ask questions can ask questions. Otherwise, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, don't forget, take some pictures. You don't have to take pictures every day. Um, take pictures when you make progress, when you get time to work. So if you're um, busy with a lot of classes and you don't get to carving today, if you get a chance tomorrow, or if you get a chance tonight, you know, um, do about 10 minutes a minimum per picture. So if you just have 10 minutes to sit down, you can, that'll be a progress, you'll, you'll show me some work. Um, if you do a couple of carvings in a day, then show me the last one you do. So if you do a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon, a little bit in the evening, show me that evening picture, and that's enough progress. And then you can just put in the notes when you turn it in, into Google Classroom, that you've done it this many times today, or you did this much total time. 
I'm not tracking time. I'm not tracking anything. Uh, the goal is to have this um, by Wednesday, have some sort of progress picture in. And the goal is to be finished with soap carving by this Friday. And then we will start talking next Monday about our next project. Cuckoo, cuckoo. All right, guys. That's all I need for you. Have a good one. Oh, I didn't see Fatten slip in. Hi, Fatten.